Thanks for tuning in. I'm Edgar Dietrich from Hexagon TV. Today we are talking about IoT Internet uh, 4.0 or IOP Internet of Production. And uh, the question is that uh, this kind of things are very often used uh, to progress the um, communication between the uh, different um, the different uh, systems in the pro in the production, and um, uh, if you particular if you have uh, uh, a virtual mod model <laughs> a virtual uh, model available which describe the relationship between uh, the process uh, uh, parameters in the production and uh, the process uh, and quality characteristic of a product, then related. Um, uh, related parameters uh, who has influence on the product uh, can be uh, adapted um, uh, continuously and uh, monitored efficiently. Um, how uh, I, AI technology will change uh, this uh, kind of, of things. Today we have uh, Professor Schmidt uh, from the um, WZL. This is the laboratory of uh, uh, machine tool and uh, production engineering of uh, Aachen University. Uh, you are the chair uh, of uh, production metrology and um, quality management. I would like to discuss with you today uh, the question how AI will change uh, the quality management. It's my pleasure. We appreciate taking time you uh, that you are here. Professor Schmidt, my first question. Um, independent that we talk about future technology, I would like to ask what's of your point of view uh, the uh, my most major milestones in the last, let's say, 20, 30 years in the quality management? Yeah, according to my point of view, uh, it's a continuous development. We started some hundred years ago when we sorted out everything. But uh, during the 1980s, 1990s, something happened because uh, the responsibility for having a perfect process was delivered to the worker themselves. This was uh, one of the most important thing and uh, this is a little bit of the development where we found quality management to be first analytical. Uh, so this means to describe something and uh, maybe even to understand what's going on in order to predict processes. But if we look at uh, today's development, then we will see that the future quality management will be a little bit more predictive. What does it mean? So not only to analyze structured data, but also to learn from unstructured data in order to learn about uh, the behavior of our processes and the manufacturing technology in general. Now we come to the uh, definition or the term artificial intelligence. Uh, from my point of view, I don't know any ISO uh, definitions about that and many people uh, feel uh, uh, uneasy with, uh, with this term. Therefore, I think uh, should we not better use in the quality management uh, things like machine learning, deep learning and can you explain uh, this a little bit more? Uh, yeah, uh, I came across a uh, citation of a British mathematician and uh, what she said is uh, that machine learning or artificial intelligence is uh, less intelligent than be more focusing on the statistics. And I think uh, this might lead to a pretty good uh, definition, at least in the, term, in the area or in the domain of quality management, because artificial intelligence comprises a huge bunch of uh, totally different machine learning activities and the integration into a process. So let's uh, think about a little bit how we could transfer the knowledge that we already gained in quality management into new technologies like machine learning where we find clusters, where we can distinguish different patterns and where we see something uh, that is not only linearly uh, derived from the data that we have but that is a little bit more complicated and that gives us uh, new tools on our hands to be successful in quality management.
Mm -hmm. About deep learning, uh, I guess that's uh, the way uh, to train a neural network uh, for a specific application. And the question is uh, how we can structure or how to structure uh, this net and from where we get the data to train the network. This is, um, I guess, the difference in the commercial area. You had the data, but in the production, uh, I guess it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that's right. Uh, absolutely. If we see, for instance, artificial neural network, we can distinguish between the different types where we have supervised learning and unsupervised learning. And of course, we know exactly that uh, in production, we may need uh, unsupervised learning. Nevertheless, it's all about data. So uh, these new technologies come only into play when we have the opportunity of gaining some data. And this data needs to be received. And fortunately, we have all the meteorological and sensory data available in order to deal with this learning and the training of this neural network. But on the other hand, of course, the accessibility of this type of data and all the different type of data is one essential thing that we have to deal with, mm -hmm. of course. And, we have, and if we have such a, a trained network, how uh, can the people uh, trust this, this network? Well, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, we, we see it from other domains. For instance, what we see in the medical sector, where some analytical uh, networks, neural networks, uh, are even better than the surgeon who is going to see something. So maybe uh, it's something in between. Uh, according to my point of view, uh, we focus very much on the data. On the other hand, we need to develop the right models in order uh, to apply the data too. And uh, the understanding of the model is something which is a little bit of creativity of uh, uh, human beings. But uh, according to my point of view, if we manage to find out that we get reliable data and that we get valid models, then we will be able also to establish a new technology which is reliable and where people can trust on. Good. Um, you are one of the directors of the WZL and uh, there you uh, developed uh, or used uh, the terms Internet of Production and yeah. you described this very precisely. Uh, what is the goal uh, of uh, this definition and uh, what is behind that? Yeah, the Internet of Production for us, it's a kind of a framework. And uh, the uh, major goal, of course, is to take right decisions. And the question is, who is taking the decision? The, that may be automates. Uh, this may be human beings. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely convinced that human beings are still part of our manufacturing value creation chains, of course. So our framework is a little bit about uh, the raw data that we perceive and that we receive many data that we can get and that we leave these type of silos. So we have to convert these raw data into smart data. If we have these smart data, then we need to apply models in order to interpret what these data means. If you don't have the idea what the data is good for, then you may draw nice pictures, but we, you never get, get any benefit out of mm -hmm. it. So uh, for us, it's uh, decisive to look at the data level, then at the model level, and then on the decision-taking uh, level. And this is uh, the major goal, to have better decisions. And better means not only faster and low latency, it also means in terms of including more goals, for instance, sustainability, reliability, and so on, rather than only productivity. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of digitalization yeah. behind. <laughs> and if I uh, have a look in the production, uh, then I know that the operator is be able to assess his uh, machine and uh, his equipment. He uh, hear it if the noise is changing, uh, if the vibration is changing, uh, can we uh, uh, transfer this job also through a new, uh, neural network? I guess uh, this might be a pretty good idea uh, to, uh, to get the idea how human beings are perceiving their idea. We usually have very much trained, uh, trained people in our factories and uh, uh, included in our value creation. So, uh, according to my point of view, it's a good starting point to look at how men or human beings react and perceive everything. And uh, what you mentioned is a kind of pattern recognition. An experienced worker knows exactly how to handle their machines, how to interpret what they, what they perceive via the, their senses. 
um, uh, let's uh, have a look into the future. Maybe we mimic a little bit of this human perception on the one hand side and we add additional learning and we establish a kind of network of different labs, worldwide network. Then you don't only learn by one machine, but by many machines. And uh, therefore, I guess it's a very promising way. Okay. And uh, uh, at first I couldn't believe it, but I heard very often in the production that the operator has uh, the same efforts uh, for the measurements to get the values uh, to check the quality uh, compared uh, to the efforts uh, to operate the, the machine. Uh, is uh, dynamic uh, sampling uh, the, the answer for the future? To I guess reduce it, these efforts? Sorry. I, I guess uh, this will be part of the answer as well. Uh, if we uh, knew or, or if we are able to uh, take decisions in a responsible way, this means avoiding waste, avoiding additional effort, then uh, this might be a way. What does it mean? Uh, of course, uh, if we only look at fixed intervals, for instance, uh, then we are a little bit in the term of statistics where we have to deal with and we need to understand what we are doing, otherwise uh, it's crap in, crap out. And uh, maybe uh, these new technologies will support the decision making and therefore uh, the dynamization of, for instance, sample taking is one of the first goals that we might achieve. Yeah, and it's a, a clear requirement. If you uh, have a measurement process in the production, you must show the stability and the capability of uh, this of uh, uh, measurement process ongoing. And uh, as an example, a CMM in the production uh, uh, has to be calib uh, calibrated every year or so. And what is in the, in the meantime? Uh, what can yeah, we yeah. do about that? Yeah, absolutely right. So what we see is that we have fixed intervals for, for maintenance and so on. What does it mean? If you don't use your machine, uh. the maintenance interval uh, is too short. If you use it very often, uh, then it's too long. So uh, let's have a look directly on the machine and the behavior of the machine. And if we have a continuous uh, surveillance of the machine, for instance, then we can dynamize as well uh, the inspection intervals, the maintenance and so on. These are very fast benefits, uh, let's say low hanging fruit despite the fact that the technology behind it, that needs to be developed as well. Okay, I see in the, in the meantime, in the production, especially in the, uh, in the assembly area, uh, people have glasses uh, on their head. Uh, what means this as a, a digital twin or reality, virtual reality, or what, what means that? Yeah, it's a, I, I guess it's a mixture in between. Uh, we only have our senses to perceive uh, the information. And I talked about the models, the models that convert data into knowledge. Uh, but we can use this, uh, these models, for instance, to give additional information directly to the, uh, uh, to the person being involved directly at the machine. And you, we see a lot of these activities in terms of uh, that we enrich a little bit uh, of the real world by these data uh, in order to take uh, better decisions in terms of how to change the settings of a, of a machine or how to improve or uh, to recognize that something is going wrong and so on. This, uh, uh, this type of technology will take place and according to my point of view it's uh, a part of the general development but nevertheless we need the models behind that. Without the models, without the data it's only a nice picture and it's impressive, but it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But uh, artificial intelligence technologies will help to prepare the, uh, the model. And I guess with, a, uh, with such kind of help, uh, you get automatically also a documentation uh, what the operator uh, did. This is uh, so. Yeah, of course. Uh, some may, uh, may argue that uh, we take into account a little bit uh, the abilities of the operator and we may uh, think uh, that we want to do something uh, in order to uh, set limits to the operator. I guess uh, in contrast it's uh, exactly the opposite. Mm. Uh, we enable people to use their personal knowledge and still to access additional knowledge in order to take better decisions. So. Uh, Artificial intelligence, finding data out of something or finding information out in unstructured data, this is the way to deliver to the persons and therefore human beings, according to my point of view, will be still part of the value creation chain. Okay, and uh, from your point of view, uh, in the next 
let's say, two, three, four years, what will be the major changes in, in quality management? Yeah, uh, this is a pretty good question. Uh, it's always difficult to predict the future. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, during the past, we uh, concentrated very much <coughs> on processes and in order to get the processes right, so we set clear limits and we were very eager to focus on a documented way how we run processes. And maybe, or I guess, these new technology will change a little bit on that uh, because we will learn to react more flexible. So uh, one of the ch major challenges for quality management will be to handle this flexibility, this new gained flexibility, and, all the, uh, and also to include more people being responsible for the outcome or, for instance, a production site. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I said, uh, I guess, a big change in the, in the quality management was 30, 40 years ago. You have the feeling that uh, these days we can expect another big change? Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of my major topics, of course, is education. Uh, we need to educate. We need to educate people and we need to train people. We need to train people on the job because we still want to use their knowledge and we want to give them opportunity to uh, get benefits out of their knowledge. On the other hand, we uh, talked about these new tools, for instance, machine learning, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligence. And maybe it's a pretty good idea to include a little bit of this new technology, which is mainly statistic-based or mathematics-based, to include it a little bit more uh, into the education of engineers or uh, any other people dealing with quality management. Mm -hmm. So it will give us a new degree of freedom if we make use of these new technologies. And this is one, uh, maybe even a kind of disruption, because not only documentation is the main goal, but the benefits, getting directly benefits out of what we are doing, this might be the next, let's say, uh, paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. I heard the sentence, uh, no artificial intelligence without human intelligence. This? Uh, yeah, I do but agree. <laughs> I would be very happy if we could complement artificial intelligence with natural intelligence as well. <laughs> okay. A big thanks to our guest, Professor Schmidt. And uh, if you have additional uh, questions, uh, see the homepage of the WZL uh, Aachen. And thanks for tuning in.